Welcome to this Aspen tutorial, which is designed to demonstrate the use of thermodynamic models in Aspen to generate VLE data. We'll illustrate the approach for the ethanol water system and we'll consider simple approaches to choosing an appropriate model to describe the vapour liquid equilibrium for a given system and how to transfer Aspen generated data to Microsoft Excel for further analysis. Here is a VLE diagram for the ethanol water system at a pressure of one atmosphere. On the x-axis, we've plotted the mole fraction of ethanol in the liquid phase. The y-axis shows the mole fraction of ethanol in the vapour phase. The green circles represent experimental data points from the 1943 publication referenced here. And these data were identified and retrieved using the NIST Thermodata Engine database. The smooth red curve represents a more complete set of VLE data generated in Aspen using the NORTL thermodynamic model. And there's obviously good agreement between both the experimental data and the NORTL predictions. Let's work through the generation of the VLE data in Aspen using the NORTL model, as well as, for illustration, the ideal and uniquack models. We're going to run Aspen and open a new simulation. We go to New, User, General with Metric Units and Create. As always with Aspen, we must ensure to provide all inputs required by the system in order to run the simulation. As indicated at the bottom of the screen, the input is currently incomplete and the first step which requires information is Component Specifications. So we must select our components, ethanol and water. Once these are selected, we see that the red and white circle becomes a checked mark. In the panel on the left, we can see that the methods input is incomplete. The message bar at the bottom again indicates that Aspen requires additional input. And this input is related to the thermodynamic method. So we can click on methods here on the left, or we can hit the next button which will automatically take us to the next step requiring an input. We'll start by using the NRTL method, which, as we've already seen, appears to work very well for this non-ideal system at the specified pressure. To select this method, simply click on the Base Method drop-down box, find NRTL, select it and hit Next. Aspen now calculates the parameters required for the NRTL model. Now the message bar at the bottom of the screen indicates required properties input complete. The red and white circle in method section has changed to a check mark. This means that Aspen is ready to use the NRTL model to generate VLE data for ethanol water. To do this, go to the analysis section shown here and we click on the binary icon. A new tab appears which allows us to select the analysis method. Firstly, let's generate a TXY plot for the ethanol water system. The valid phases are vapour liquid. Note that the pressure is already set to 1.01325 bar, i.e. one atmosphere. If we wanted to generate data at a different pressure, we can change that value. Now let's run the analysis which will generate the TXY plot. Here, we have a TXY diagram for the specified binary system at the specified pressure of one atmosphere, with temperature plotted on the y-axis and the ethanol liquid and vapour mole fractions plotted on the x-axis. To see all generated data, click on the Results tab on the left and the results are displayed. Take a moment to look at the information that's been generated. If you want an XY plot of the data, you can transfer the data to Microsoft Excel or for a simple plot in Aspen, select YX from the plot section above the data table. Note that the NRTL model shows an azeotrope clearly visible at very high ethanol mole fractions. For generating plots and manipulating data, it's generally easier to use Excel. For instance, Let's compare the VLE data we've just generated using the NRTL model to the experimental data retrieved from the NIST TDE database. Let's start by selecting the entire table. 
we're copying it and pasting it into Excel right under the NIST data we've previously retrieved. We'll wrap these headings so that we can read them more easily. We can compare these VLE data from two different sources by plotting both the NRTL XY data and the experimental XY data on a single graph, as we've already done and it's shown here. The NRTL data are represented by the smooth red curve. The experimental data retrieved from NIST are represented by blue circles. There's obviously good agreement between both sets of data across the full ethanol concentration range which suggests that the NRTL model works well for ethanol water at a pressure of one atmosphere. Let's try another thermodynamic model and let's choose the ideal model which we wouldn't expect to work well for our azeotropic system. So, returning to Aspen, we're going to close everything, hit the reset button to purge all previous results and start afresh. We have to define the new model to be used in Aspen for this simulation. So we go back to Methods and choose Ideal. Now the required input is complete and we're ready to go. We go back to Binary in the Analysis folder and change the method from the previously used NRTL model to our current choice Ideal as shown here in the drop-down box. We then run the analysis again to generate a TXY plot. Here we can immediately see that the new TXY diagram with temperature on the y-axis and liquid and vapour mole fractions on the x-axis is very different to that generated using the NRTL method. Let's see what the y-x plot looks like. As you can see, the ideal model does not feature an azeotrope. To illustrate the extent of the deviation from the experimentally determined VLE behaviour, let's compare the ideal, NRTL and experimental VLE data. From this plot, generated in Excel, you can immediately see very good agreement between the NRTL model, shown as the smooth red curve, and the blue experimental data points, but very poor agreement between the experimental data and the ideal model, shown here as the green curve. In order to model any system, it's essential to select the most appropriate thermodynamic model for that system. For guidance in selecting a method, you may find the Methods Assistant useful. You'll find it in the Methods section. When we select Methods Assistant, here's what appears. Based on your answers to questions about your system, the Methods Assistant will make recommendations about models for use in describing the thermodynamic and physical properties of that system. Firstly, we're going to specify component type. However, there's also an option for process type. Next, we choose chemical system. Now we're asked if our system is at a high pressure, i.e. above 10 bar. We select no, as our system is at a pressure of one atmosphere. For chemical systems at low pressures, the Methods Assistant has now suggested a few thermodynamic models which we might use to simulate our system. NRTL, Wilson, UniQuack and UniFac. We could choose to further refine our search by working through the options presented below, but for now, let's explore just one other of the proposed models, the UniQuack model. In Aspen, in exactly the same way as already illustrated for the NRTL and IDEAL models, we can generate ethanol water VLE data using the UniQuack model. And here, shown side by side, are VLE diagrams all showing experimental data points as well as the Aspen generated data for the NRTL, UniQuack and IDEAL models respectively. It's clear that both the UniQuack and the NRTL models Describe the experimentally determined behaviour well across the full concentration range at a pressure of one atmosphere. However, as expected for this azeotropic system, there's very poor agreement for the ideal model. And remember, this wasn't one of the models suggested by the Aspen Methods Assistant. To summarise, we've seen how to use Aspen to model vapour-liquid equilibrium 
for a binary system at a specified pressure using a specified thermodynamic model. We've highlighted the importance of selecting an appropriate thermodynamic model using experimental data for the system for validation purposes. And we've illustrated the use of the Aspen Methods Assistant for preliminary guidance in method selection. Thank you for your attention.